domain events and eventual consistency. These are terms that are often mentioned together, but in this video I want to highlight what are the dangers that could arise depending on when you publish your domain events. I'm going to show you how to implement domain events publishing and I'm going to explain what are the problems that you will need to solve. I'm starting from an application use case implemented using Mediator. This is the start following command handler and it implements the start following feature when one user of the system wants to follow another user in the system. To quickly guide you through the handle method, we have fetching of the user and the followed user at the start. Then we're calling the domain service to execute the actual business logic and then persisting the changes in the database. Now the call to the domain service is the important step because it's going to enter our domain entity, which is a follower, and call the create method. And the create method is going to raise the follower created domain event. Now this domain event on its own won't do anything. We'll have to implement domain event publishing as the next step. But first, let's create a respective handler for this event. I'm going to create the handler in the same folder as the use case, and I'm going to call it the follower created domain event handler. Inside of this handler, I'm going to send a notification to the followed user that they got a new follower. So for that, I'm going to create a new abstraction, which I will call the iNotification service. And this service will be responsible for actually sending the notification. I'm going to create a generic method that I'll call send async, and you'll be able to use it to send a notification to any user in the system. You can specify a message, and I'll add an optional cancellation token as the last argument. So how I'm going to use this notification service is injected in my follower created domain event handler. So I'll say private read only I notification service, and I can inject the service now from the constructor. Of course, I also need to make my class an actual domain event handler. So I'll implement the I notification handler interface from mediator, and I'm going to specify the follower created domain event as the generic argument. Now I can implement the handle method, and inside of this method, I'm just going to call the notification service and return the task from the send async method. Alternatively, you could also await this, it's perfectly acceptable, and wait for the completion of the send async method, and I'm going to be sending the notification to the followed user. The message is going to be something simple, like you just got a new follower, and let's also pass it the cancellation token. So I won't be doing any logic inside of this handler, I just want to focus on running it, and I'm going to highlight the actual side effects of the main event publishing. So let me move the notification service abstraction into its own folder. I'll create a notifications folder that's going to hold this new interface, and I'm going to move the interface inside and adjust the namespace. The next thing I want to do is provide a dummy implementation for my notification service. So I'm going to create a notifications folder inside of infrastructure and inside of it I'm going to create the notification service implementation. And the real reason I'm doing this is so that I can implement this interface from my application project and I'm going to leave the send async method to throw the not implemented exception. Let me register this with dependency injection. So I'm going to say services add transient i notification service and I'll specify my notification service as the implementation. The reason I want to throw an exception from this method is so that I can show you what happens when you publish a domain event before and after persisting changes in the database. So that's going to be our next step. I'm going to update the application database context to add support for publishing domain events. Here's what I have to do. I'm going to inject a service into my application database context, and I'm going to use the iPublisher from Mediator that I'm going to use to publish the domain events. I'm going to initialize this from the constructor, and now I'm going to create a helper method that's going to allow me to gather the domain events first and then publish them one by one. So let's call this the publish domain events async method. And here's what I'm going to do inside of the implementation. I'm going to create a variable that's going to contain my domain events and I'm going to use the EF core change tracker to get my collection of domain events for the current database transaction. I'm going to call the generic entries method 
and I'm going to look for any classes implementing the entity base class. I'm going to select the actual entity. So I'll call the select and then take the entity instance. And then I'm going to call select many to project the list of domain events from this entity back then to my domain events list. So I'm first going to create a local copy of the domain events. I can create the domain events variable here and I'm going to grab them from my entity by just accessing the domain event property. Now, if I take a look at the implementation, this is going to copy the existing domain events list and return it back from this property. So if I go back to the database context, the next step will be to call the entity and clear the domain events. I'm doing this because publishing domain events could trigger further side effects and I want to prevent the publishing of happening more than once. So now that I've cleared the domain events, I can return the captured domain events here and materialize everything into a list. And then the next step is straightforward. I'm just going to iterate through the domain events list and I'm going to call the publisher and execute the publish method and specify my domain events. And now to actually call the helper method I created, I'm going to override the save changes async method and I'm going to show you two implementations of this method. In the first implementation, I'm going to publish the domain events before I call the base implementation of save changes async. In this implementation, I'm publishing the domain events before any changes are persisted to the database. So my events aren't actually events because they aren't a fact yet because they are not persisted in the database. So this implementation is wrong from a theoretical perspective, but I'm going to show you what are the practical implementations when we run this use case. I'm going to send a post request from my API to an endpoint that's going to trigger the start following use case. So I'm going to click send and we're going to land inside of the use case handler or the command handler. So I'm going to step over a few steps where we first fetch the users and we're going to end up calling our domain service. I'm going to hit continue and I'll jump to the code inside of the follower entity where we are creating a new entity and raising a domain event. I'm going to hit continue again and we are back in the use case and now I'm going to call the save changes async method on the unit of work which is actually our database context. This is going to lead us into the save changes async method on the database context instance. And we are first going to execute the publish domain events async method. So if we grab the domain events list, there's only one domain event inside, which is the follower created domain event, which means that we are now going to publish this event and land inside of the event handler. And if I execute the send async method, if you recall, it's actually not implemented and we're going to run into an exception. This exception is going to roll back the existing transaction and we're going to get a 500 internal server error response from the API. So the end result was actually good for us because the publishing of the domain events rolled back the entire transaction and nothing was persisted in the database. The problem is you could end up executing your domain events which means running your side effects like publishing emails, sending notifications, calling webhooks, whatever you might be running inside of your domain event handlers. But the next step, which is calling the save changes on the database could fail. And this is where you run into a problem and you have an inconsistent state in your system. So how do you actually solve this? Well, the straightforward solution is persisting your changes to the database before you publish the domain events. This flow is significantly different from the previous one. First of all, because our domain events are now actually facts because we have persisted the original transaction into the database successfully. And then we go ahead and publish the domain events, which could fail. And this brings us to another problem that I'm going to highlight now. And I'm going to show you what the problem is by sending another post request to our API. We're going to land on the breakpoint inside of the use case. I'm going to hit continue. And here we are at the call to the save changes async method. If I hit continue again, we land in the implementation inside of our database context and watch what's going to happen now. I'm going to call the save changes async method and it's going to persist my entities into the database. You can see that the result is one. 
which is the number of records that were inserted into the database. And now I'm going to try to publish my domain events and this is going to fail because the notification service is going to throw an exception. And if I hit continue again, we're going to get a 500 internal server error in Postman. But if I try to send this post request again, I'm going to get a different response. And this time I'm getting a 400 bad request because we are already following the same user. And do you realize what this actually means? In this example, our call to the database completed successfully, our transaction was committed, and all of the changes are saved in the database. But after that, we are publishing the domain events and they could fail. And this has two important side effects. First of all, our system is now eventually consistent. Any changes made inside of the domain event handlers are persisted to the database after the original call to the save changes async. The second problem is the domain event handlers themselves could fail and this would propagate an exception and cause your entire request to fail if you don't handle it. And most of the time you don't want to handle it because you assume that event handlers won't fail. And while this is generally true, there is a way to make the publishing of the domain events reliable using the outbox pattern. And if you want to learn how to implement the outbox pattern, take a look at this video next where I'm showing precisely this. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to smash the like and subscribe buttons. And until next time, stay awesome.